So for those of you that have been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I love to come here and talk about the items that I think are worth the money. Because let's face it, for many of us out there, it's not an infinite resource. We only have so much of it and we want that money to go as far as it possibly can and endure the test of time. Now, while that might not be the case for everybody, I can't help but think that there are just some items that are just universally bad for your money, that's putting it politely, or just wastes of money. And you'll often notice with these types of items that they'll be worn once or shown once and they'll never be seen again. And I can't help but feel I am partially responsible, at least for someone who creates luxury content here on YouTube, that I must speak up and tell people, especially if you're young and you're just getting into this community or building up your collection, that you could save yourself a lot of time, a lot of pain, as well as money if you avoid these luxury items. So I went ahead and put together a list of 10 items that I believe are a waste of money when you consider the crazy price tags. But before I go into them, obviously a disclaimer here is due as is very customary because people get offended when pe other people have opinions that differ to theirs. That's just called life. And if you don't like it, jog on. I'm not talking about you personally. And of course there will always be exceptions to every rule, but that's just it. They are exceptions to a very common and usually consistent rule. And the first item, or at least category of items that is on this list is the vanity, miniature, or small leather good types of bags. And no tiny bags are in, right? It always vibrates between the big bags and small bags on the spectrum, but I'm talking about the really small bags. I'm talking about two Tic Tacs can fit inside type of bags. That could be like the Chanel, tiny vanities or the tiny airpods holders or the Jacquemus Le Chiquito which literally fits I think a little tiny stick of gum if that I think sticks may be pushing it a little bit far. Stick implies it's got width. It has not got width at all or depth. And a lot of people find them cute. I think there's just something about miniature things that we, especially as women as well, find just irresistible. I feel that way as a side note about anything miniature, even when it's like fruits and vegetables, like baby carrots, baby potatoes, all those things, I don't know why, they just, they just get me. So I understand, trust me, I do. But I think when it comes to items that, at least for brands like Chanel, are almost the same price for other handbags from other fashion houses that will give you a full-size handbag, you're talking like two or three thousand pounds for some of these miniature, honestly, spoof presents. And I just think that is extortionate. I think that's daylight robbery, even though it's consensual, right? So it's not really robbery, and I think it is truly a little bit reckless to spend something, that amount of money, an obscene amount, on a glorified gum holder. I don't get it, I personally feel like handbags should, at minimum, unless you're going to an evening event and someone else is carrying your phone or something, or you're a big celebrity, fair enough. But I think if you're a normal person, the you and I's of the world going out for the evening, you need it to at least fit your phone. And I just don't see people in day-to-day -day life situations carrying a tiny bag for their gum. And you know, the rest of their hands are just full of their stuff. So they look like an evil witch with their hands like this. It just does not make sense to me, especially considering again, tiny bags and super big bags always rotate in and out of style. And I just think being somewhere in the middle is probably the safest place to be. You're just gonna be a constant. And I think when it comes to a wardrobe, that's a good place to be. I know everyone wants to feel like they're part of a big trend. They wanna feel involved. They wanna feel like they're current, they're leading the trends even perhaps. But I just think, especially at this place that I am in my life, don't care about that kind of stuff and neither should you because it's costly to buy into these kind of silly trends and things that don't actually have value. Literally holding two Tic Tacs or a lipstick at best is just stupid, it's comical. People will laugh at you. I certainly feel that way when I see because I know how much these things cost. If I see someone wearing this, and I've only seen it like maybe once in my life, I just think, you're a sucker. You've just got too much money to burn. And I think there are much more productive ways that you could have spent that amount of money, whether you think it's significant or not. I think it's still an obscene amount of money to spend on basically a doll's house item. Now on to item number two, and this one I feel is on the list of basic items that an Instagram influencer has to have or a lifestyle influencer has to have and that is the luxury wash bags or toiletry bags. Now I'm instantly thinking of the Louis Vuitton pouches here. You know the ones, everybody loves them for some reason but I just think what is the point of having designer wash bags that are instantly going to get dirty, manky, smelly perhaps. I mean I understand when people perhaps even want to 
drop that much money on a mini bag because you're bringing that out and about and you're maybe showing everybody how much money you spent whether that's in a good way or bad way but with a wash bag it's just you seeing it it's not exactly like you're buying it for the quality you're buying it literally for the brand for the Louis Vuitton canvas bags you're going to get a canvas that will make contact with water because it's a wash bag it's unless you're literally putting like cables and things in it um, and repurposing it that way in which case I strongly question your Kind of decision making abilities to spend that much money on a cable holder or something then obviously if you're putting toiletries in there they're going to get wet it's going to get damaged and the canvas is going to crack and you're not going to exactly resell it are you because you've used it so it's basically six or seven hundred pounds down the drain quite literally no pun intended and what for a flex on instagram so you could put a lifestyle photo or something i also have bought specific toiletry pouches which were like 20 or 30 pounds because it doesn't need to be glamorous because they're going to be ruined and they need to be also ideally machine washable or at least wipe clean. I paid a lot for that logo and good for you if that's what you want but I just think it is a waste of money and it's for people who have guessed too much money because no one's actually going to be seeing it apart from you or maybe your partner and is that the desired effect or maybe you just want to be bougie in all parts of your life and maybe you're a multi-millionaire or billionaire and then that doesn't apply to you but i think for the rest of us we've not got that much cash to burn now let's move on to item number three and this one is a very broad brush stroke that i'm painting and i know there will be exceptions but hear me out on this one and that is designer makeup now obviously there will be certain items which some people will say is their holy grail like do you remember the ysl two chicla for example that was super big and i know for some people the chanel or hermes you know lipsticks and blushes and things are really you know the it item for them but i think as a whole designer or luxury makeup is quite gimmicky they are more focused on the brand name as opposed to the quality or the formula or the innovation with prada at least now they've released a lot of their beauty collection their makeup ranges and don't get me wrong the packaging is impeccable the marketing has also been really good but am i going to pay like 50 pounds for a lipstick or something absolutely not especially when there are other companies that will do the exact same thing have even perhaps a better formula but for much lower price and they are specialists they are actual makeup cosmetics companies not just ones that have slapped a name on potentially even repurposed a formula from another lower tier brand you know just like you'd go to a butcher for your meat i'd go to a makeup company specifically for my makeup doesn't mean that i won't get the odd item i you know i don't know if this technically counts as makeup but i've got like the chanel hand creams i think they are nice but it was an extortionate amount of money like 50 pounds or something for a tiny tube and I will not be doing that again and ultimately I think you're just buying the name and I feel that way as well around like even celebrities who collaborate with companies to make certain things like how much of it is them making their mark on an item and ensuring quality control is more about them attaching their name and their kind of reputation to it but if you're just going after the aesthetics then who am I to judge right we've all been there now moving on to item number four and this one I suppose is a lesser popular category but still one nonetheless worth mentioning and that is designer keychains or charms now the ones that come to mind are more like the Louis Vuitton kind of monogram style ones or the Fendi monster I think even um, uh, Carl Lagerfeld had some with his head on him. Every luxury fashion house pretty much does one. And you know, you can use them to personalize your handbags. But I do think that they are a waste of money as they can be easily knocked off. Some of the knockoffs in fact probably look the same if not better quality than some of these actual original designer ones. And obviously the novelty will wear off after one or two goes at it on your item. And then you're on to the next charm or the next thing. And I just think ultimately they're a little bit childish, especially with like the Fendi monsters and whatnot. Also the Hermes Rodeos are a really good example. They are like upwards of £1,000. Like not to say that you can't have the odd cute item, but I think an abundance of keychains. What fully grown woman, normal fully grown woman has like 20 Rodeos. Like the amount of people that I see on YouTube unboxing Rodeos and Pegasus ones, I think they're called, is insane. Why are you unboxing little charms that cost literally cumulatively more than like a Himalaya Birkin perhaps? It's not like you can wear the little cha the charm on its own. It has to be specifically paired with the bag. And you'd probably be better off buying, buying something that is logo free that is either from a market or something or handmade by another artisan or from a small business somewhere that is just at least so much cheaper and when the novelty wears off you won't even care because you've only spent like 10 or 15 pounds on something I think there are better ways to personalize your bags that don't cost you an arm and a leg and don't make you look really foolish and that you have so much money to burn and make you look like a mature adult because i don't see why 
fully grown adults should also have so many stuffed animals and things, especially ones that cost upwards of a thousand pounds potentially. So let's move on to the next item in this list. And this one is again, really popular, but I just don't understand it, especially from a safety and security perspective. And that is luxury luggage. So I'm talking about the Louis Vuitton wheeler cases. I'm talking the Ramoa luggage. I just don't understand why you would spend so much money upwards of the thousands to have luggage that gets thrown around, bashed around, rolls across all kinds of dirty surfaces and potentially makes you a target for theft. I think it's bad enough, especially if you're a luxury lover, to have a branded bag or branded shoes or branded clothing, but then to also have branded luggage, especially ones that aren't for uh, carry-on, the ones that are actually through uh, actual hold luggage, I think is just super foolish. I don't understand why people do that. They make themselves a target, not just from a security perspective, but also to have your beautiful luggage that you've paid so much money for to be damaged and, and thrown around by people who are super careless and couldn't give a rat's ass about the condition of your item at the end. I know some luggage companies like Ramoa are a little bit more robust, but I think Ramoa has now elevated itself, in fact, with collaborations like Dior in the past, to a kind of higher tier level and it's really identifiable. It's not like a Samsonite or anything. People know Remo is for the bougie people. And honestly, it's just got mug me written all over your face, written all over the luggage. I'm saying it how it is. That's just how I personally feel about this. I will always get inconspicuous luggage that is secure and durable, but not gonna make me an additional target to what I already think that I might be. I mean, I've even had personal experience of having an item be stolen in an airport. In fact, on an airplane, I think I've talked about it on my channel around my Chanel black wallet being stolen. I'm so sad still to this day about it, but it's because, you know, you make yourself a target. And I must say, I take accountability in that fact for the br many brands I was wearing. And so would I want to add more fuel to that fire by getting a piece of luggage that also is branded? I think that you're just asking for trouble, especially if you're perhaps traveling alone. And it's just not worth the Instagram flex for 10 seconds to potentially compromise your safety and also damage something that is incredibly pricey to say the least. Now let's move on to our next item. And and this one's kind of a broad category. I'm not sure if they all sandwich in properly, but it's basically seasonal fabric bags. So it's ones that are like in the sequin or with like feathers or potentially even tweeds, basically anything other than the normal kind of leather or even exotics, I suppose, or just like normal kind of like a skin. These bags in the particular ones I see at Chanel are very very raved about but they are not made to last and i think even the fashion house knows that these are gimmicky bags and they honestly look quite cheap as well i think that they are just basically one or two use only before they start to bubble they start to pill and there is no saving a bag that is made of fabric and made of those kind of sequins and things like that. Once one of them is gone, they all start falling off. It's not like you can go and repair it or paint over it. These are things that once it's done, it's done. And you know, you can obviously take it back to Chanel, but you're realistically gonna be doing that every single time a little sequin falls off. I don't think so, nor should you have to because you paid an extortionate amount of money for these bags. Some of them are often price and request or in the upwards of like up near the 10,000 pounds limit, potentially beyond for some, especially for the maintenance of it. It's just really stressful, I think. I would be so scared to scratch or, you know, brush past any surface or person for fear of my bag collapsing. And I just think any seasonal textured bag is not a great investment because ultimately leather, regardless of what people's stance on it is from a humanitarian, ethical or whatever standpoint, these bags are breathable, they're skins, they're made to last. With other kind of textures, whether that be fabric or whether that be even like the thatched bags, like the um, straw bags, or whether it's been like mock leather bags, they always split, they always crack, and I would just steer away from it because often the prices can be a lot more than if you just get a basic kind of I say basic leather handbag. This is a category that I'm sure some people would disagree on because I know some tweed bags in particular look really classic and nice, but I think long term the damage is just going to be irreparable and it's not going to do well on resale if you need the money back. And it's also something that not everybody likes, it's not everybody's cup of tea. So for that reason, I think I would just avoid it. Next, we have another broad category of item. This one may be controversial because I have a lot of this item myself and it's costume jewelry. Now I'm not saying, of course, that it's every single piece of costume jewelry. Some are better than others, depending on your fashion house, depending on the type of item, depending on the complexity of the items, if they're stones or other kind of embellishments and whatever. But I say as a general rule, Costume jewellery, if you can afford 
to get fine jewellery or maybe artisanal jewellery from a smaller brand or something or just wait and save up then I would absolutely do that because I found in my experience costume jewellery to be very hit and miss. Luxury and fine jewellery pieces that I have gotten have been a lot better in terms of the investment value, long term longevity really. So for example like the Tiffany uh, necklace that I have, the key necklace I have has not tarnished, the diamonds are still very shiny, the Rolex I have is still incredibly impeccable. Mercy my Chanel costume jewellery earrings I've had to have send in to get fixed because stones have fallen out, same with the necklaces as well. It is just not worth it in terms of the time commit. And no, it's not happened to every single one. I have had some really good experiences with costume jewelry, like brooches and things like that, and other earrings which don't have lots of bits in. Those are fine as well, long-term. But I would say as a rule, especially with the prices now no longer being a couple of hundred here and there, but they're now upwards of like six, seven hundred, potentially thousands. As you say, that's edging into fine jewelry, high jewelry territory. And it's just therefore not worth considering costume when you can get the real deal in the actual like gold plating, like actual carrots involved and it's gonna be an heirloom piece. Whereas costume jewelry, it tarnishes, it you know, sh sheds stones. It is just not something that you wanna pass down necessarily, especially if it's like an earring or something, then it's just metal, you know, it's not actual gold or anything. It's just such hassle to maintain those items, if I'm being quite honest, that I kind of wish I spent less on loads of costume pieces and actually channel those ones into like one or two really nice, fine jewellery pieces and I've already started doing so like for example creating my own uh, silver ring and doing that design myself I think it's a lot more sentimental means a lot more and it's a lot cheaper actually than to get it from a designer brand next let's talk about something that's a little bit more around clothing I suppose if you can call it that maybe it's more an accessory and that is hosiery at least I think I'm saying that right hosiery tights basically for people in the UK I know the Gucci ones are really big and those are several hundred pounds. And after a few wears, they will inevitably ladder. And I just don't understand why people are that committed to flexing Gucci or whatever equivalent designer brand that they've bought from. Is that important that you would spend 300 pounds for essentially like two wears or something? So that's like 150 pound a wear. Again, natural selection is doing its job because the luxury brands are just laughing. They are literally laughing at people who buy things that are like one use only. Of course they're gonna keep making them because it's a quick win. They cost like 10p to make and then it's a thousand percent return or something when they go off to sell it. Buying tights is very utilitarian. It's not about what the brand is or what it looks like necessarily, but it's about do they actually work in covering your legs? And there are pl plenty of brands that are like 10 pounds through to maybe you can get them for like 50 or 60 pounds. I know there's like sheer text ones, which are really good. Like I understand if you're getting it for specific innovative technology that are anti-ladder, then you could justify the pricing. But I think for a couple of hundred pounds, like what is wrong with you? <laughs> As we are ending this video, let's talk about our penultimate item. And that is designer phone cases. Obviously most people upgrade their phones every year. And I personally, you know, even if I don't do that, I always use normal generic phone cases. But this cost me like maybe five pounds when I was in um, Japan or South Korea when I bought it. And it does the job fine. All it needs to do is protect my phone. And that's it. And I think a lot of designer phone cases are about the style than the actual substance, which is really important when you're getting a phone case to protect your phone. And I've seen a lot of videos or comments from people who have said that their phone can fall out or, you know, their phone's still cracked from impact. Shock horror, you know, who'd have thought a, a brand like a Louis Vuitton or a Chanel or something would have made a phone case that doesn't do its job because they are not a phone case company. Just get one that is inspired by or something like that or just something fun like this and you can trade them up as much as you want to personalise it. They'll, when they'll break you won't be sad about it and eventually if you get a new phone you'll get onto the next one and you can recycle those cases as well or donate them. People always struggle when they are selling these cases because who is going to be that specific in what they want and you'll inevitably get a really bad price for them. Also, I think for the leather ones, they almost already start to smell. I always feel this way about leather wristwatches as well. They always have this weird skin smell or dampness smell depending on the textures you put them and for several hundred pounds is it really worth it you can literally almost buy a new phone by the amount of phone cases i see some people get it is just absolutely ridiculous and now let's talk about the last item to round off this list and this is again another kind of category and that is designer hair clips and hair accessories now i myself have bought the odd like hair clip and things 
that is designer. I have bought a velvet bow, so it's really nice. It's got beautiful little Swarovski's diamonds on it. It was 60 pounds, so it's not on the scale that I'm talking about here, where some people buy like the Prada grips and whatnot. So I feel at least better in myself, but I've only worn that hair clip like three or four times that I bought it, maybe like four years ago or something like that. I suppose that's kind of how I feel, similar to like the costume jewelry point where it's just not necessarily the quality that you're getting, it's mostly the brand. It just seems like really silly to buy like enamel clips or velvet hair grips or whatever, just to have a little logo on it. And I know some people like that, but I think when it comes to your hair as well, like it could rain <laughs> and your hair is not protected usually, right? If you just caught out. So it will literally see, see that damage. And I feel like sometimes someone could just steal that right up from your head. I mean, if you're flexing everywhere else on your handbag, your clothes, your shoes, maybe even your, your jewelry, then why do you need a silly hair clip and these things can be so easily imitated who knows on the street if they're real or fake or not and so would you want an item really that can be so cheaply made anyway with that all being said those are the 10 luxury items that i think are a total waste of money and i would love to hear if you've got more items that are a waste of money down in the comments below but i'll leave this video right here thank you as always for watching and i'll catch you in my next one